Hello everyone, welcome to SuperDrill webinar, a smart solution for modern land management. This webinar will take around 40 minutes and with 10 minutes QA time in the end. Now, of course, our support team will answer your questions. My name is Eugene, the marketing specialist of SuperDrill Technologies. I will be the host today. And here, sitting next to me, is the speaker of today, Danny. Hello, Danny. Hi, everyone. I'm Danny. I'm the speaker of today. Nice to meet you all. Danny is our senior regional manager. He has a master's degree in forestry and long-term experience in GIS. Before we start, let's warm up with a quick poll, and we'll be back in two minutes. Our first question of the day is, have you ever tried SuperGIS software before? Okay, here I would like to show you the poll result with you. It seems like uh, around 45% of our audience today haven't used SuperGeo products before. But don't, don't worry, you can just visit our official website and get a free trial. So, here I would like to show you SuperGeo products roadmap. SuperGIS complete solutions cover from server, desktop to mobile GIS. And for those who have ability to develop their own working environment, we also have developer GIS for you. And today we are going to focus mainly on SuperPad, uh, which is our full function mobile GIS in SuperGIS mobile series. If you are interested in our other solutions, you can find previous webinar records on the YouTube channel SuperGeo TV. SuperPad is powerful mobile GIS software. Users can use SuperPad to collect, edit, display and measure spatial data such as point, line, and polygon data with ease. It's highly flex flexible develop environment and various extensions provide you the ability to create customized platforms and solve different problems in the field. And moreover, SuperPad can work well with SuperGIS server, which can lead you to an instant data communication between different workers. And during this webinar, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to share it with us. Just simply send messages to us with go to webinar comments field or simply send an email to us. We will reply you as soon as we can. So Danny, our topic today is about smart solutions for land management. Can you tell us why do you choose this topic? Okay, hi everyone, I'm um, Danny here. And yes, of course, I can tell you why I choose this topic, because the land management it is actually a very hot and highly uh, discussed uh, topic right now, because people are now caring about the, the land and also the, the, the environment where we're living uh, right now, and also uh, people are more care about the sustainable future. So this is a very good question, a very good topic, so we can talk about with also with the mobile solution. Uh, also, we have uh, I choose this topic because we actually have a, a good story to be sharing to all the audience that we recently have a successful story in the Turkey. So I will be sharing this story uh, within this topic and in the later on slide. Okay, so let's move on uh, to today's agenda, which I will be giving a quick briefing of uh, land management and also some challenges that uh, nowadays land management has been facing, especially with the modern trend, uh, with the, tech, with the uh, advance of the technology. In the third part, we'll be talking about how modern aspect can help, uh, especially with the smart geotech, can help with the traditional uh, land management to improve. And in the final part, I will be talking about how to integrate uh, this smart GIS solution, smart mobile GIS solution, and into a real case and to give some innovation to all the audience that maybe you can think about to integrate this kind of solution in your daily field work and to help you have a better uh, working efficiency and also with the, uh, save more time. Okay, so we'll be move on to the, the first part. We'll be going to give a quick review of the land management. So what is a land management? It is actually a process of managing the use and also the development of the land resources. It's not only in the urban area because I know um, most of the users are um, thinking about the, the land management. We all always think about the, the uh, urban area and the cities, uh, about the building, about the cadastral data. But also nowadays, more and more uh, to be application in the rural area, and not only in the farm area, the, uh, the forest area, the, the land, and also with the water land. 
And the, a very key point of the dent management is to put a good effect with the resource of the dent. And so to be frankly speaking, it is actually a very big topic of the dent management. So it has a variety of a different application field, including like farming, like uh, mineral extraction, and what people really care about, about you know, uh, our house and our, our land is actually the property and also the estate management, and some also the physical planning of the town and the countryside that a new town should be built or a country land, uh, countryside that then used to be changed. Uh, yes, it's all, all kind of application in this field. And I think the key spirit of the uh, land management is actually to sustain the, you know, especially nowadays that we talk about the sustained health, the diversity, not only the biodiversity, but also in the land use diversity, and also to maintain the productivity of land and for the use and enjoyment, especially for our uh, you know, future generations. Okay, now I think everyone has some basic concepts about what land management is. Danny, can you share more details about it, like some history? Yes, of course. I do believe that uh, to understand a little uh, history about the land management will help us to know more about this topic. So talking about history, it is actually the land management actually originated from the cadastral surveying. It's actually, I know more people uh, know about the cadastral work, cadastral survey. And in the old time, when people uh, when we discuss about the land management, we actually we are talking about the, to determine and to define the land ownership and also the boundaries. This is actually in old time. And in the former record, around, you know, 215 years of history, and uh, it just start from the legal boundary survey for the government. And in the old sayings, that is very interesting part that the land survey is, uh, you know, people are saying that it's not only a science because we do know that uh, the land survey or land management is actually a science to care about the, the, the equipment and also the measurement and also the survey technique. But some people are saying it is actually an art. Why is it an art? Because the surveyor has to understand not only the concept to do a good measurement uh, to find it and describe what it found, but also uh, has to be able to interpret the relationship to the old to the record, especially with the old record. Because if you go on the field, you find a family or something, you have to interpret it with this uh, with this uh, history, with this uh, older data, so you can find out what this is. So actually, yes, I do believe that, I, and, and I do agree that the answer is not only a science, but also kind of an art. And in the modern world, that the land management now people care about is actually uh, more and more about the sustainable land management, which not only was the manage but also to maintain to main the maintenance of the of the land, which uh, like. Um, due to the decrease of the water resources. And so people are now caring about the, the, the drainage application and design, and also people care about the impact on the environment. Like um, if we're doing some kind of uh, land use changes, we want to build them some new new buildings or uh, to change the land use, we want to change the land use of a farm. Uh, people always care about the impact on the environment. And I do believe that is very important uh, nowadays. Okay, before we move on, uh, Eugene, I do know that you study ge geography in the, in this, when you're back in school. So, um, you know, to your understanding or to your thoughts, what kind of the, you know, the challenges or maybe some difficulties that the, the, the land management or the worker of the land management might be facing? Hmm. As I know, the surveying data used in land management is usually acquired by spatial instruments and has specific formats. It is different from the normal GIS data. Okay, that's a very good spec, I think. Um, actually, I do know because you care about the, uh, you know, the geography and also the GIS data. Yes, it is actually uh, difficulties or you can say challenges that to uh, in the traditional traditional survey uh, to change the survey data into the, the, the you know the mainstream GIS data is kind of uh, challenges and also a uh, complicated work uh, but nowadays we since yes that is also uh, a part of the of the challenges that I think nowadays with our technology can help and so in the second part we'll be talking about all the challenges including what Eugene just said uh, some ch challenges that 
nowadays the land managers are now facing. And so in in the in the uh, in the first part is that um, due to the technology trend, uh, the land management data uh, not not mo uh, you know most of them yes most of them has now been stored uh, digitally. Uh, you can find out this trend uh, due to the uh, development of the computer science that uh, in the 1961 all the data are still in the paper mode. You, can, you know paper people are always do doing all the work in the uh, by the paperwork. But uh, in 2011. All the data are starting to become digitally. Okay, all the data has been digitized, and some kind of data has been transformed into the digital data. And it's truly uh, all the data can start now be start uh, be stored within the single USB drive. And now they in, in the end of the 2015, uh, all the data are not only be stored within the within the you know the hard disk or USB drive, but also not only the single PC, but our also stored on the cloud, which I'm talking about uh, the cloud technology, the cloud computing, and all the data are now talking about the sharing or talking about the open data. So actually, yes, the old, old open, uh, paper data has also been uh, digitized mostly. So this is a trend that uh, all the field work cannot stop. So uh, the traditional uh, field, uh, the paperwork when you're out in the field and you head back, and now you're going to face some challenges uh, that the traditional workflow is com too complicated to fit the modern trend, which means uh, when using the traditional workflow, you're on the field, you quick, uh, you take a lot of different equipment, it's very heavy, and you have to collect all the data and get back to the office. But if you're, uh, you know, the officer or the company want, want the, the data in the digital format, which might be, and so you have to spend extra work hour uh, to turn all the data or the uh, record into the to do the digitize or to transform the uh, into the geospatial data format and to apply. So this is actually a very inconvenient, exhausting uh, way to do the field work uh, in, in this traditional way. And so, still some other challenges include that uh, uh, field work, which actually I think this is a very critical part, is that field workers often use the outdated data, which means they carry the outdated data out with them. They, they travel a lot on the field and do all the survey, but they use the outdated data to do the survey. So this is actually very critical that their result might have some um, arrows or might have some fault. And these kinds of fault can be um, can be uh, very critical to some project or to some uh, to some application, and also uh, with the traditional way, yes, just I, I just mentioned, you have a lot of different carriage, and also with the mapping technology, you carry the paper map, you carry a lot of different equipment to do the survey, and it is uh, a very hard work. And the final part is that. Uh, if you're an officer or a manager uh, with the land management, you send out the worker to do the field, to do the survey with you, for you. Uh, but it's hard to guarantee all the data quality and also the data timeliness for the survey work because um, if you send out the worker and the worker, you cannot uh, verify the data. Uh, what workers do on the field, you cannot uh, when, when they take back all the data, uh, finish all the work, and back get back to the office and found some error. You have to send them back to the field and do it all over again. So this very uh, takes some very a lot of time and also a lot of cost, and it's not a very good way uh, to do the field work uh, in the modern world. Okay, that uh, was a great introduction of land management and its challenges. Uh, but I'm just a little bit curious. Why do, uh, why do you know so much about land management, Danny? Oh, actually, uh, just as uh, Eugene just mentioned, I have been studying in forestry when I back in school. So, actually, we have yeah, we do have a lot of uh, do a lot of different you know survey uh, for the land management, not, and also for the inventory, and not only the forest land, but also in the urban area. We have some case in urban area. We have some case in the rural area. So I do know the challenges and also all the difficulties that in the traditional way and to switch into the modern way. Uh, data has been, been switched the modern way, but uh, all the survey work has to, uh, are still in the paperwork, so it is actually a very hard uh, you know, environment to work. OK, I see. Let's move to our second question of today and take a little break here. Uh, the second question of today is, uh, what kind of land management challenges do you face mostly? 
and we will be back in five minutes. Okay, it seems like uh, about 50% uh, 50 uh, 50 of our audience today think that data integration is inconvenient. But don't worry, we will provide you solutions for these difficulties. And let's begin the second section of today. Hey, Danny. In the first section, we've talked about the challenges that field workers are facing in land, manage land management. Is there any way that uh, mo mo modern technologies can help? Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is our second part of the webinar. And Eugene, thank you for your uh, question. Yes, of course. Uh, the modern tech, especially, uh, I've been um, introducing you, the modern tech, uh, including the 3S technology, including the computer science, we do provide a, a solution for the land management, especially with a smart geotech. So, okay. The modern aspect with the 3S technology is actually uh, due to the fast development of the 3S technology. The 3S technology actually stands for the GPS, the GIS, and actually and also the RS. Uh, the GPS, I think most people are much more knowing about the GNS right now because due to that we have a rise of the different satellite systems, including the you know the GPS, uh, the GLONASS, the Beidou, and also all the other. Um, Variation correction uh, satellite system we have now, and to do the navigation and also the correction. And uh, with the technology advance, uh, we do can we can really have a, a better workflow that to avoid the redundancy in, in the time and also the resources. And so the field worker uh, can be more focused on their field work, but without carrying the heavy and also the, the fully functioning equipment. No, there is no need of that. Uh, the, the modern technology can provide a, a a much better solution for the field worker, for the special uh, usage, and it was just lightweight, which is all-in-one solution, and they can focus more on the field work to get a better uh, and, and quality uh, in, the, in the field data, and also uh, to collect all the data in the mainstream uh, GIS format, which is actually a very important uh, features. And since SuperGeo is actually a core GIS technology provider, we do provide the solution with the smart mobile GIS, which is the fully function uh, GIS application called the SuperPad. I think uh, Eugene just made a quick briefing in the first part of, their, of our webinar today. It is actually a powerful and complete mobile GIS solution which focus on to helping, helping our user uh, to collect the data, to edit, display, and also do the quick measurement of the special data on the field, which is actually more focused on the field work, but rather than to carry a lot of different you know, an analysis or uh, heavy loading uh, function, which is very simple and has a flexible structure and contain a lot of use, uh, useful uh, extension. And also, uh, if user can want to customize any extension they want, they can use a very simple way to customize uh, the function they need. And since the SuperFed is actually a smart, we call it a smart mobile GIS, it is actually should be and has to be uh, cloud tech ready. So it is, yes, it is cloud tech ready. Um, user can simply just get the data from the, you know, from the online map. They can use from the uh, SuperG server to do the data streaming. They can also use and integrate with the uh, OGC standard uh, services and all the data from the OGC services. And so I'm going to give a quick uh, introduce, introduction about the SuperPad, which actually has a very intuitive user interface. It can display the map with plenty of content, including not only with the uh, raster data, uh, the vector data, but also with the raster data, with the on the map, with the map cache, cache data, cache map file, and all the different kinds of the data can be integrated uh, within the single uh, application. And also, it contains a powerful position and function, including the full support of the GNSS module, uh, both internally and also externally. Uh, it contains the, the function of the NTRIP solution and also the DG, DGPS solution for users to have a better position of the data. And it also helps users to collect data, uh, you know, integrate with the data streaming. And via the cloud, you can simply just do the, uh, the data streaming with the SuperG server. You can use the OGC services. And finally, it has multiple extensions. Uh, we build in a lot of different extensions, like uh, 
for the laser uh, distance laser gun. We have a uh, extension for the quick manual, and it's very easy to integrate. And if you need to do the customization, you can do it with, in a very easy way. Hey, well, it seems like a super pack can really shift the trend of field works. I do know that uh, recently a new version is coming. Can can you share more details about this new feature with us? Okay, yes, of course. Uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> yes, <coughs> sorry. Yes, we do have a, a new version of the SuperPass now coming, which may, uh, we mainly focus on the uh, usability and also the re reliability on the field because we do know that a uh, user cares about this very much uh, when you're doing the field work on the field. Uh, it's very important to have an application that is uh, uh, reliable and can uh, guarantee the data uh, quality. And also we have enhanced the GNS as supporting, which has uh, now we support more module, uh, especially with our very close partner, the high target. Uh, and also we enhanced the uh, entry solution, which now we can provide a variety of different information on screen for user to check and to find out what kind of circumstances are now uh, your, your, the positioning, uh, what, what kind of environment also the circumstances are facing. And also, uh, we have renewed the data services and also the OGC services, which is, has been a brand new look. And also, uh, uh, user can now integrate with the WMS, WFS, and all the other services uh, with ease. And also, we add some new uh, function like uh, WFS fe uh, filter and other function that helping user to integrate uh, these kind of data on the field to be very easily. And finally, uh, we also renew the extension. I, I know a lot of people are using this uh, when they're on the field to collect the data. It's actually the advanced attribute table which produce the, uh, the drop-down menu for user to use when they collect the data. And now it can not, it not only provide the drop-down list, but also provide the related drop-down list. So all the data can be, uh, all the attribute can be set up and when you're in the office and when you're on the field, you can do a very quick data uh, collecting, okay. And this is actually a solution with the Smart Mobile GIS that uh, we talk about the integration with the all-in-one Smart Mobile GIS. And it not only contains the, uh, the software, but also with the hardware. We do suggest our uh, user to find the, the latest hardware, including a very useful, uh, you can use the handheld device, or you want to use the tablet device, because Superpad has not only with the, P, uh, the PDA version, but also with the PC version, which is actually very smart, uh, very uh, strong and powerful. And also, you can find a very uh, useful, uh, very uh, latest, the GNSS uh, receiver, not ex internally or externally. Uh, we do support them. And these kind of, and you can simply just combine all the solutions together and largely improve the workflow and save more time. In fact, you can combine all these uh, devices and software uh, to create a, a proper uh, workflow and create a proper working environment for all the uh, field workers. And also this kind of solution can help all the user to access varieties of data, both offline and online, because all the data can be stored within your devices or it can has to be can to be online and to do the data streaming, or you can collect and edit the data without complete uh, data processing and transferring procedures. What this means is actually you don't need to carry a lot of different equipment. You can simply carry this all-in-one solution to the field. Just one man, you can finish all the work together. And also, you can collect the data. You don't need to do the paperwork. You can collect the data via the smart devices, via the smart solution in a proper GIS uh, format, which is actually the mainstream GIS format, like shapefile, or our uh, format like geofile. And so you can select, and also uh, you can collect the, like a track log in the Camel format, uh, which is always uh, all, all kind of the useful format that is the mainstream GIS format. You don't need to do the digitize back in office. You don't need to spend a lot of the time, extra time, to do the data integration. Okay, so I do prepare. Uh, demonstration for all the users that um, all the audience and uh, I'll be showing that the super pad and integrate with the tablet computer 
uh, that's running the Windows OS and also with the external GNSS receiver uh, on the field. Uh, since I'm we ran now in the office, so I cannot do it lively. So I prepare a video, uh, what it looked like when you're on the field uh, with such a pad. Okay. Okay, Danny, you have prepared a demonstration video about land management. Why don't we watch it right now? Okay, here's the video. Okay, this is uh, in the first part. I've been showing that. Um, this is a SuperPath 3.3. You can find out that I integrate with a, a beautiful map with the open stream map and also with my uh, offline data, which is actually the cadastral data here in the northern part of Taiwan. Here's Taipei. <clears throat> and you can find out that uh, within the SuperPath, it's actually very easy to use and to operate like um, in the layer manager or the uh, the operation of the UI settings are quite the same as uh, if you're using the desktop GIS, actually just the same as the table of content. And you can switch, you know, various of different settings, including the symbology, the label. You can do all that thing. You can move around all the layers if you want. <laughs> and also, uh, SuperPad is very important uh, that SuperPad integrate with a very useful and very powerful GPS support. Uh, you can do a quick setting before you use, including you know the the battery, the COM port you'll be using, especially when you're using the uh, GPS externally. And also, <clears throat> in the GPS options, we have provide a uh, variety of very useful function, including you can uh, record a track log, you can record the log file. If you want to save all the NEMA data you've been using uh, along the day or you want to do some debug, it is very useful function. And you can simply just set it up and turn it on. It's a very in easy way to use. In this video, I'm also uh, showing off the Antrip setting, which is the Antrip solution within the SuperPad is a very useful function for uh, the solution for a high accuracy data survey. And since here, I'm in Taiwan, and also we, um, I'm going to survey the Malpon here in Taiwan. Also, we support varieties of uh, different uh, modules, especially with our partner and also the mainstream GNSS uh, manufacturers. And after you finish that, you turn on the Android solution, you turn on the GPS, okay, boom, the, 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 the correction data will be collected and sent into the GNSS receiver and the data, um, the, the positioning data will be in a higher, higher accuracy uh, than the, uh, you know, the GPS or GNSS only. So you can find out here, uh, we're uh, finding in the video that here we, uh, my position has been shown within this map. And I also set up the, the scale of the label. So we find out that when I zoom in, the label will be showing. So the, the, the map view won't be too crowded and full of different uh, labels. This is a very useful function. You can set this up uh, in the layer. And since you can find out that here, we're in, actually, I, uh, we put uh, our GNSS receiver just outside our uh, company. So you can find out that here is where we are. And also, if you're on the field, we I can introduce you to this very uh, useful function in the, with the tr GPS track log. We can save it uh, in, into the shapefile format and for you. And so you can, uh, and also in the KML format, so you can uh, find out where you've been uh, when you're back to the office. You can find out the route and you can integrate with the other uh, GIS software. And some other information has been shown in the GPS status. And also, uh, here I'm going to show you a very useful function in the video is that the waypoint. Uh, the waypoint has improved recently also. And now it can do the stakeout mode because I know a lot of different users are talking about, oh, can the, the Waypoint system in SuperPad, can it do the stakeout? Yes, it, now it can do the stakeout. Um, if you, you can simply just import all the Waypoint you need and you can just uh, switch between them, uh, set it into the target, and it will be showing the, the, the degrees, the, the, the direction, and also the distance uh, you do go to that waypoint. And after you're getting really close to that waypoint, uh, it will be showing both the X and Y um, offset that help you to find out the, uh, the, the, the proper position of the waypoint as a very useful function and you can try it. And uh, also, if you want to find them some waypoint that is very far enough, you, far away, you can use the go to function. We will help you to find out uh, where it is. And yes, this is a very useful function in SuperPath 3.3 uh, recently. 
uh, the latest version will be uh, uploaded to our website uh, in, uh, in in the upcoming days. So you can uh, you know get excited and and try and try it. And here I'm be showing is that uh, the data collection within SuperPad uh, we we support a variety of different mainstream GIS format, and also we support the Z value, uh, the Z geometry of the of the vector file <clears throat> that you can simply just uh, turn it on, and the GPS will collect uh, collect the height. The height will be uh, placed in the Z geometry uh, within the data. So <clears throat> after you're back in the office, if you collect the data that had contained the Z geometry, you can present in the 3D uh, environment. It's a very useful function. And also, if you collect the data, you want to be uh, we support a variety of different CRS around the world. So uh, you can simply just find the CRS you want to collect. Uh, like here, I'm, well, you can find it in the video. I'm collecting. I'm collecting the data here in Taiwan. So I'm select the uh, projected uh, green system here in Taiwan, and you can find whatever you want uh, within the system. And to collect the data, yes, of course, uh, I think most of people uh, care about the data collection that you can simply tap on the screen to collect, or you can use a GPS to collect, uh, like what I'm doing right now. And after you've collected the data, you can also uh, find out all the, uh, the data you've been entering and all the data you've been collect uh, by the feature properties. You can find out more, and you can find out there are uh, you know X, Y, Z because it's uh, contains the Z value. So uh, with the SuperPad, all the work is very easy to operate. All the work is easy to use, and not only with uh, a very intuitive UI design, but also uh, now um, if you're using a PCA version, you're using a PC version. All the things are very easy to use and to operate. So I do believe that SuperPad is a good uh, smart mobile GI solution for uh, the field worker. And here I'm going to switch to the second part of the demonstration, which this is a very new, uh, very new function and new updated uh, function I'm be showing off is the renew of the OGC service within the SuperPad. Uh, now you can user can uh, simply integrate with the WFS layer, the WFS uh, services. Uh, you can find out that I'm using the service which has uh, been published by Norway and using two of the layer. Now with the WFS uh, function updated, the SuperPad now can treat the WFS feature, all the data into just like the offline feature. You can switch between the different properties, you can set up the symbol symbology, you can set up, set up the label, all the things can be done with the WFS data, which is very useful because it is not only the base map, but you can treat it as the feature. Uh, so you can see in the in, in, find out in the video that I'm now just uh, switching the symbology. You can also use the transparency, which is a very useful function. If you uh, do the data integrate with the different data, and you want to find out more information with the same spot, and uh, all the data can be integrated with not only with the with the OGC services, but you can integrate with the offline data, including the raster, the the, the, the vector data you have within your uh, with your mobile mo uh, your mobile device, and also, yes, of course, with the online map. So this is a very useful function, and also you can find out that I'm showing the labels. You can find the label. You can do the um, you know the property settings, including where to show the labels, the mission centered, and also with the uh, the visual scale if you want. So you may find out that this is the result. So you can actually yes, you can treat it like. Uh, just like uh, offline data and very easy to use. You don't need to uh, carry all the data with you. You just have to, you know, have a cellular uh, internet or you can ne cellular network or you can have a Wi-Fi. And also, I've been showing off a, a really uh, useful function on the field due to the limitation of the internet speed and you know the cost of the internet, the, the mobile uh, the mobile network uh, is the limitation of the features, which including the maximum feature and also the big box filter, which you can find out that in the in the video I'm typing in the the x the center point uh, and also the distance to de to decide uh, the the features I want to use. I want to find out. I want to load into the 
into my machine. And also you can integrate with this uh, center point with the GPS if you want. You can find out the, the current position, uh, hitting the button, it will integrate with the, your, your current position. And you can find out I'm going to key in the, this, I'm going to found. And after that, uh, just remember to, to hit the filter update button. The web request will be sent uh, to the server again and get the, all the data renewed. And you, after you hit the OK button, you can find out that the data has been changed uh, just as uh, what I decide, what I uh, define in the settings. And if you zoom in a bit, you can find out, yes, this is all the data uh, I'm looking for. Uh, set up the center point and also the distance to decide uh, the, the feature you want. This will uh, significantly um, uh, decrease the cost of the data transfer um, if you're not using the, uh, if, it, if you have uh, some limitation of the data transferring, especially with the uh, speed of the internet. Uh, when on the field, this is a very useful function. You don't need to uh, load all the data, all the data within the single uh, WFS uh, layer. And also, you, we also support you to uh, allow users to, to define uh, the filter by the map view, which is actually the map frame uh, you'll be looking for. And actually, I'm, look, I'm now setting the filter for the second uh, layer. And so after I update it, if, if you zoom out a bit, you can find out, yes, all the data has been defined as what I saw. So the, 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 uh, the filter as applied to all the features uh, in, in the second uh, layers. So this is actually a very useful function uh, when you're on the field. And all the setting, and also we support user. If you if you do know some uh, custom expression you want to add to the WFS service, you can simply just enter it. Okay, that will be today's uh, demonstration. Okay, that was a really uh, clear de demonstration for SuperPad. Thank you, Danny. You're welcome, Eugene. Okay, then let's move on to our final part today. It's actually we're talking about a real case about how to integrate, how to implement uh, this all-in-one GIS, uh, mobile GIS solution into a real case and how people work with it. And probably we we'll give you some innovation about how to, you know, in integrate this kind of the mobile jazz solution in your daily work and to help you have a better uh, working efficiency and also help you to uh, work in a um, more easy way. Okay, this is actually a success story in Turkey that uh, one of our partner in Turkey, uh, they helped the local institute, which is the general directorate of land registry and cadastry. Uh, uh, this institute actually uh, manage all the data of the land data uh, in Turkey, management and also the ma maintain ma maintenance. And due to the you know the digital trend, yes, they are switching to the digital data instead of uh, traditional paperwork. And these kind of um, all-in-one solution do help uh, with the you know with the advancement in the modern technology and helping their workflow to become more smoother and less cost and helping helping everyone every field worker to be happy. Oh, a true story from Turkey. Interesting. Uh, Danny, can you tell us more about what is the role of SuperPad in this all-in-one mobile jazz solution? Okay, of course. Uh, the, the SuperPad actually play a very key part, uh, key uh, role in this solution is including, because this solution including uh, the SuperPad with the GNS extension, which provide the entry solution with the G and also the DGPS solution, and also integrate with uh, uh, the close, uh, very close partner with this is actually High Target, their V60 RTK GNS receiver, and also with a proper uh, tablet computer, the Dell Venue Pro which runs the Windows 8.1 OS. And the combination of this solution, preparing the all-in-one solution by our partner, and you can find out the, the real case and also how it looked like uh, when you set it up. So in the field work, you can simply just carry this all-in-one solution to the data collecting, to the data editing, and or you can find out some more information uh, from the GIS data and also do some record on the field work. And the user in Turkey, they actually uh, more focus on the integrate with the OGC web map services. That's why uh, we keep on moving and keep on developing uh, with the OGC services that to help the, our user 
to uh, integrate with the different data and also collect data in the proper way. Uh, they mainly focus on the WMS, WFS, and also WMTS data, and especially with the WFS data, which they focus on the navigation uh, via the WFS data, which they have uh, the, the point data uh, to do the navigation. They can simply just uh, add in the, the point data from the WFS services and then set it into the waypoint and do the stakeout. So it's actually a very useful function uh, they'll be using. And another very key uh, solution and also the, the function sort of provide for all the users is the on the fly projection. Uh, because when they go to the their sur survey side, uh, they do the survey and they have to compare the result and compare the differences between the uh, the, the the data from the different uh, various timeline, like uh, they go to the survey side, they have to integrate, they want to find out more of the difference or, or the details from the old data, so they integrate with different uh, the data that is in the different CRS. So the Onlify projection really helped them to find out all the differences and help them with their daily work. So this all-in-one solution, it's not only uh, very light and easy to carry, uh, and everyone can have one, and they can do the work by their own, and no need to do the extra work when they're back in the office. They can collect all the data to edit the data in the proper uh, mainstream GIS way, and uh, saving a lot of time, a lot of cost. And yes, this advanced technology on the mobile GIS solution with the high-precision GNSS uh, hardware and also Yes, the smart device and nowadays was really convenient and helpful and strongly supported and help all the field workers in, in the church and agency uh, for the survey, not only in the uh, urban area with the buildings and also with the rural area and all the all around the world and all, all around uh, the, the, the area and region of Turkey, of Turkey and in a smart and efficient way. Okay. And that will be uh, what I'm going to share today within today's webinar. And finally, I'm going to sum, uh, some, uh, do a quick summary of today's uh, my speaking. Uh, we talk about the importance of uh, land management nowadays, especially in the, uh, uh, the sustainable land management. And we talk about the challenges uh, for the field work. And we we'll, we'll do all the work around do looking for a uh, more efficiency uh, workflow for the field work. And we talk about total solution with the smart mobile GIS, which is actually the uh, smart mobile GIS solution. This is super pad. And also with uh, all the smart devices, including the hardware uh, of the GNS, and also with the smart devices like a tablet computer. And final, we talk about the success uh, story in Turkey, which actually we do hope this, uh, this uh, small, uh, success story and cases can innovate you to think about it, to integrate this kind of all-in-one solution, the mobile GI solution, into your daily work and help you to have a better workflow, save you more time and getting more uh, quality data, and that's work for a better and sustainable future. Okay, that will be today's webinar, and I will be uh, switch my microphone back to Eugene again. Okay, it's Eugene again. And I'm here to share latest Super Drill news with you. We are proud to show you our all new API lessons for Super GIS Server. You can establish uh, you can establish fascinating web maps easily by the following by following the tutorial step by step. The API lessons will help you to understand how to publish your maps online, how to overlay your maps with other map services such as Bing Map or OpenStreetMap how to adjust the colors and symbols of your map services, and how to create helpful tools like the gauge and the swiper. And now, uh, let's move on to our last pool of today. Uh, the last question of today is, do you find uh, the information in this webinar helpful? Uh, please let us know your opinion. And we will be back in two minutes, and uh, then move to the QA time. Okay, finally, it's our QA time. Please drop your question by GoToWebinar, and we'll be right back in a few minutes. Okay, and our first question of today is uh, an audio asked, uh, does SuperPad also support 
tablet devices. We need uh, tablet devices plus GP GPS RTK solution. Okay, this is a very good question. Uh, actually, I'm doing the demonstration in the webinar. This, actually, yes, I integrate with the tablet device, uh, which is a Windows tablet, and also with the external uh, GNSS uh, RTK receiver. So yes, this question, the answer is yes. It is very easy to use. You can simply connect all the device. Uh, if you like, uh, you you use the cable, it's okay, and also you can use it with the uh, Bluetooth connection, it's also okay. Uh, so it's actually very e easy to use, and uh, the, the I think the, the tablet that runs the Windows OS is also very powerful uh, and easy to carry, uh, and, and some kind of device, especially with a rugged uh, tablet, will be very nice equipment for you on the field. Okay, the second question of today is, uh, uh, can I add, add auto photo as base map? Okay, uh, the auto photo, I think uh, maybe it was, the, I think it's actually uh, talking about the raster data. Uh, within the super pad, uh, we do have the support with the raster data set, including the uh, format, including the JP2, the JPEG 2000 and also with the MRC, which is the SID file, and we support the, uh, on the raster file that uh, you can uh, produce by the SuperGIS desktop with the SGR format, and all the other, uh, we also support some kinds of uh, uh, the cache map, uh, including STC, the, the STP, and also with the SGT format. Yes, yeah, so we do support the Orso photo. Uh, we do, and we also plan to support more uh, in the future. Okay. Okay. The third question of today, and an audience have asked, uh, can we share the presentation slides? Of course, uh, we will upload our presentation slides late, lately on on uh, our official website. Okay, uh, the fourth question of today is uh, an, an audience have asked, uh, would the SuperPad work on, uh, on the Android devices uh, now or in the future? Okay, uh, good question. That, uh, yeah, in the roadmap of the Super GIS product, uh, the SuperPad is for the Windows and the Windows mobile environment. So, uh, but in the, in the, Android OS, which has the, the, the smart device that in the end run in the Android OS, uh, we do have a solution called the SuperSurf. And now it's the SuperSurf 3.3, also in the 3.3, and you can simply just try uh, our application because in the Android OS it's actually an application. And all the function I mentioned today, including the OGC services, including the, uh, the Android solution, including all the data uh, integration, uh, can be uh, found in the SuperServe as well, uh, and we will be launching a new version uh, in the upcoming years. So we have a SuperServe 10, and the SuperPad will also be upgrading into the SuperPad 10 as well. Yes. Thank you, Danny. Uh, we hope that uh, we solve uh, we solve your questions. Okay, but uh, due to the time limit, we are sorry that we have to say goodbye to you. Other questions will be replied by our supporting later. Okay, thank you all today. The presentation slide will be uploaded to SuperGeo website soon, and the video will be available on our YouTube channel, SuperGeo TV, in two to three weeks. Don't forget to subscribe. We hope you see you soon in the next webinar. Bye.